Hello. Welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 1.2, Addition, Subtraction of Whole Numbers and Perimeter. Uh, this is part two of that video. This is where we're going to introduce subtraction. When it comes to subtraction, it's defined as uh, sometimes we call it take away. Sometimes we call it to deduct. Uh, as an example, if I have 10 minus 7, I could also say uh, 10 take away 7. And I could also say if I have 10 and I want to deduct 7. So those are three different terms that we might hear when dealing with subtraction. We also might uh, be asked to find the difference of 10 and 7. Or again, we might say 10 minus 7. Or we might say 7 subtracted from. So it's being subtracted from. It's kind of read backwards. We've got to be careful with that one. If I say 10 less than or less 7, that's one way we might hear it. Or we might hear it 7 less than 10. Again, it's read backwards. And that's one we may struggle with. So be very careful with the terminology used with subtraction. Another one is uh, we might say uh, 10 is decreased by 7. So we might hear that term as well. So be familiar with these terms. Watch for them. And they'll help to tell you what operation we're doing. Obviously, in these examples, we're going to be doing subtraction. So if I want to find 10 minus 7, the difference is what we call the resultant. When we find subtraction, it results in a difference. The difference of 10 and 7 is 3. And since in the previous video we learned about addition, we can actually use that to check our work. So if I say, well, what's 7 plus 3? If I do that addition, I get 10. So I can say 10 minus 7 is 3 because, by definition, 7 plus 3 is 10. So I checked my work. I was able to use the opposite operation of addition to check my subtraction. One thing you should always do in math is if you have the opportunity to check your work, always do so. Um, one thing about subtraction, and I'm going to return to the board here from the previous video, is the identity property. This also applies, let's say we have some value b, and we're subtracting 0. Now, if we subtract 0, we still have b. Any number minus 0 is b, just like any number plus 0 is that number. Now, one thing we have to be careful about, and we'll get into this when we talk about integers, is order matters here. It's not like the commutative property. It's not like the associative property. Because if we switch their order but not this sign, it's something different. We'll get to that in future videos. So don't worry about that right now. But the identity property also applies to subtraction if we have a number minus 0. All right, let's go back here and look at another example. We're going to subtract 88 from 123. So I said from. That's one thing we've got to be careful to watch because it's actually spoken in the opposite order that we read. Instead of left to right, I said 88 subtracted from 123. So it's right to left. All right, so to find this difference, we're going to do it horizontally, because many of us have learned to subtract horizontally. Now, in the previous video, when we did addition, if it summed to more than uh, 9, we had to do some carrying. Well, when we're doing subtraction, we have to do the opposite. We have to do what's called borrowing. If the bottom number is more than the top, we can't just find the difference. We can't just subtract. What we have to do is we have to borrow. So I have to borrow from the tens place so I have enough ones to be able to take away 8. So I borrow 1 from it, and I carry it over here. Now I have 13 ones. 13 minus 8 is 5. Now, if I look here, 1 minus 8, well, this number is still less. So I'm going to borrow from the 100. So I essentially have 11. And I could cross this out and carry it up here. But it means the same thing. 11 minus 8 is going to give me 3. So we see that 123 minus 88 is 35. Let's check our work. If I take 88 and I add 35, I hope to get 123. So I'm checking my work. Using addition, 8 and 5 is 13. Carry the 1. 8 and 3 is 11. Plus 1 more is 12. I have 123. So I check my work using the opposite operation. So I'm pretty sure 
that I have the right answer to this subtraction problem. Let's try another example. If we have 12,345 and we want to subtract 1,267, I make sure that all my place values line up. And now I subtract. Well, 5 is less than 7, so I can't take 7 from it. So I'm going to borrow. And now I have 15 minus 7, which will give me 8. 3 minus 6, well, I can't take 6 from 3. So again, I have to borrow. So I make this a 2 and bring 10 over here. So 13 minus 6 is going to give me 7. 2 minus 2 is 0. I didn't have to borrow. But I got 0 because the difference of 2 and 2 is nothing. There's no difference. 2 minus 1 is 1. And 1 minus nothing, there's nothing here. I just basically carry it down. So I get 11,078. And I want to check my work. So I'm going to add these two, kind of work it backwards. 11,078 plus 1,267. My sum should be this value. So let's see. 8 and 7 is 15. Carry the 1. 7 and 6 is 13, plus 1 more is 14. Carry the 1. 2 and 1 is 3. 1 and 1 is 2 and 1. And I get 12,345, which was the original number I started with, 12,345. So I checked my work. I know for a fact that this is the difference of the two numbers I was asked to subtract, 11,078. The next thing we're going to look at is estimating the sums or differences of numbers. It's kind of a combination of the first video for uh, this chapter and rounding uh, and adding and subtracting. So we're going to combine them all. And the first thing we're going to do is to estimate, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the leftmost digit and we're going to round each of these. If I'm going to round 73, I'm going to the leftmost digit. I want to round to this place, the tens place. So 3 is less than 5. I'm going to round this to 70. If I look at this value here, I want to round to the hundreds. It's the leftmost digit. So 3 would again round down just like it did there. So this is closer to 800 than it is to 900. This here, I'm going to round to the leftmost digit, which is 3 in the hundreds place. So I look to the right and I say, OK, this 6, which is 5 or more. So I'm going to round this up to 4. So it's 400. So it's closer to 400 than it is 300. And now if I add these up, I can add the 1's. There are no 1's. There are 7 in the 10's place plus two zeros. It doesn't change it. It identifies that 7, that identity property. And 8 and 4 is 12. So this value is approximately 1,270, which is pretty close to what the sum is. And if you want, on your own, you can go ahead and pause the video, sum these up, and see how close this is. Relatively speaking, it's pretty close to 1,270. All right, let's look at this example. This also, rounding to estimate, also works for finding the difference or doing subtraction. So again, we're going to look at the leftmost value and say, well, this 1 would round that thousandths place to 4,000. And if we look at this, this is an 8. The value to the right is an 8. So this is more than 5. It's going to round that up to 900 because it's closer to 900 than it is 800. Now we can find that subtraction. Well, 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0 in the tens place. 0 minus 9, well, we can't take 9 from 0. So we have to borrow, which oh, let's leave that as a 3 and borrow 1. So we have 10 minus 9, which is 1. And 3 minus nothing is 3. So the difference of these two values is approximately 3,100. And if you want, for practice, you can go ahead and try this one to find the actual value of that difference and see how close it is to 3,100. Again, relatively speaking, it should be in that ballpark, as we like to say. All right, this last example here, this is for you to try. Uh, <coughs> If you remember in the addition video, we added these numbers. Well, I want you to estimate these numbers. Round to the leftmost places, or place, excuse me, 
and find its estimated sum. So round these values, just like we did in this example, and find the estimated sum of this series of numbers. Check it with the answer you got in the previous video. That's it for this section. Thank you for watching.